Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new, and if you're not new, welcome back. I know it's been a while. It's always been a while with me because I just don't film as often as I would like to. Mostly from anxiety and just being scared of standing in front of a camera, sitting in front of a camera. I don't know what, what it is, but I used to not feel this way and now I'm feeling this way but thank you for bearing with me. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about all of the books that I want to, well, okay, let me rephrase that because I'm definitely not gonna get through all of these books by the end of the summer. These are just the books that I would like to pick up. Does that make sense? Like these are books that I want to read. If I don't get to them by the end of the summer, that's okay, I'll just, move them over to the fall I guess but um, I'm a huge mood reader so I can't make a stable TBR and stick to it I really really praise people who can actually do that I'm not that kind of person at all so this is just like a stack of books for me to choose from when I do feel like reading um, recently I haven't been reading as much you know this from my past videos I have not been reading as much as I normally read uh, mostly because i've fallen out of the habit honestly if i just like get myself back into the habit of reading again i think i can manage to get back on track i'm not even going to tell you how many books i've read this year because it's abysmal like that number is just so small but um that's okay that's where we're sitting here today outside if you don't know i'm in michigan for the summer my boyfriend has a lake house up here and we like to come for the summer i'm a teacher so i have the whole summer off and we've just been here since like the day after father's day and it's been incredible i love it here and so it, today's weather is like really really nice so i decided to film outside today um but yeah let's just talk about the books that i would like to the books i would like to get to sometime soon the books that i am going to hopefully pick up soon First one I've already picked up and started, and um, I put it on Instagram in a poll, and I asked between this book and two other ones which one I should pick up, and most people voted for this one. This is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshigazu Kawaguchi, and you know this book. You've heard of this book so many times. You've seen it everywhere. I know I have, and I... I'm really excited. I'm probably gonna pick this up right after I finish this video and probably just read outside or something. But this book is basically a compilation, I guess, of like short stories. We follow different people and it takes place in a small bookstore in Tokyo. I mean, not bookstore, in a cafe in Tokyo. And people can stay there and talk with I think this is the plot you can stay in the coffee sh shop in the coffee shop and talk to people um, maybe go back in time I think until your coffee gets cold once your coffee gets cold you have to leave I don't know what happens if you stay I guess that's something that we're gonna find out in the book but that's the premise of it you basically just sit there talk with somebody maybe go back in time I think and um, drink coffee until your coffee gets cold it sounds like a very cute concept there are a bunch more in this series I guess if you want to call it a series and that's kind of the reason why I really want to read this soon because I would like to explore the other books in the series as well which other people have just completely raved about I also love Japanese translated fiction um, yeah I just love Japanese translated fiction, so I'm very excited to keep going with that. That's something I'm definitely going to be uh, reading right after this video. The next book is one that I probably would never have picked up if it wasn't for a friend recommendation. And um, I've heard people talk about this author before, and I know that she gets rave reviews, so I'm not doubting this is going to be a really good book. This is Twice Kissed by Lisa Jackson. I got this at a local Michigan bookstore, used bookstore, and I know nothing about this and I kind of want to keep it that way because I think it's a thriller and with thrillers I don't really like reading what the book is about beforehand because I feel like sometimes the summaries spoil the whole plot twist in the thriller. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. So I'm going in 
to this blind. I'm not sure when I'm gonna pick it up. It's um, this is a mass market paperback, so it's kind of thick, but I know it's like, it's not that long. Oh, the text is actually really small. <laughs> the text is really small. I'm a little intimidated to pick this up, but I think I'm gonna enjoy it. I've been wanting to read thrillers, especially now that everyone was posting for Summerween um, and stuff. I've kind of been thinking more about thrillers and Riley Sager's new book just came out I forgot what it's called but people have just been like on a thriller kick recently on Instagram and booktube so I've been wanting to read some thrillers I could be completely wrong I'm not even sure if this is a thriller I think it is I think it is I know it's like kind of a romance I'm not gonna read what it's about let me not let me not do that but that's Twice Kissed by Lisa Jackson. If you've read Lisa Jackson before let me know in the comments because I would love to know your opinion on this author this next book I have never heard about, but I saw it again at that local Michigan bookstore and I thought it was like the perfect summer book. So this is First You Have to Row a Little Boat by Richard Bode. And this one is essentially about this young boy who learns how to sail and we, let me read you the Goodreads summary because the Goodread summary does a pretty good job of explaining what the book's about. Obviously, they always do, but I'm not going to be able to do it justice. <laughs> so on Goodreads, this book says, written from the point of view of a grown man looking back on his childhood and reflecting on what the experience of learning to sail taught him about the lessons of life first you have to row a little boat has the makings of an inspirational classic with each brief chapter telling the story of a young man's initiation to adulthood the bay on which he sails becomes a universe of sorts teaching him new lessons about making choices adapting to change and becoming his own person with every journey he takes Filled with the spiritual wisdom and thought-provoking discoveries that marked such books as Walden, The Prophet, and The Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, First You Have to Row a Little Boat is a wondrous and magical book that will enchant both sailors and non-sailors alike. But most of all, anyone who seeks large truth in small things. This book only has 36 ratings on Goodreads, but it has an average rating of about 4.31. That is amazing. It excites me a lot to know that the, the little amount of people that have read this book actually really enjoyed it. It's very, very short. Um, the chapters are very, very short too. So this one might be like absolutely one that I want to read before I leave Michigan. We have, um, obviously, like I said, this is a lake house. So we have a huge lake very, very close to us that we have access to. And we have a sailboat that our neighbor might let us borrow so it'd be kind of cool to read this and then take out a little sailboat for the first time um i don't know this one just like caught my eye in the bookstore and after seeing the reviews on um goodreads and like actually learning what this book is about it excites me to get to it soon all right the next one is a heavily popular book it's one that I'm sure everyone has either heard of or read already, but I've never read it or seen the movie. So I'm pumped. Um, this is an author that I've read before. I've read No Country for Old Men by this author. So if you don't know who it is already, it's Cormac McCarthy, The Road. I found this in a little free library by here. And at first I like looked at it and I was like, eh, like it's a book that I see all the time. You know, like this book, is everywhere it's in every barnes and noble it's in every bookstore sitting on the table for its praise like just highly acclaimed amazing book and i've just never given it a second thought but when i saw it in the little free library i thought this is probably a sign for me to get it and uh finally read this book like i said i've read no country for old men and loves the movie by this author and he recently passed away this year i think it was this year yeah, I think it was this year. Um, so I just thought, like, perfect time for me to read this book and for, for me to actually see, like, what this author is actually capable of because this won the Pulitzer Prize. And, uh, man, I don't know. I'm not sure what this is really about. I think it's about an apocalypse or just apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic, uh, hello? 
post-apocalyptic times. Um, and I think we follow this man and maybe his son. I'm not sure what this, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And I'm very excited about this book. I don't know when I'm going to be able to read this. I don't know if I want to read it in the summer or in the fall. I feel like this gives more fall vibes than summer vibes, but I'm glad I own it. All right, the next book is a controversial pick because one of my bookstagram friends, Megna, hates this book with a passion. Um, although she loved To All the Boys I've Loved Before, which I've also loved, like the whole series, all three books I read and I loved. So I was very excited to pick this up until I found out that she hates it and we have very similar reading tastes. So we'll see how I feel about it. Um, that book is The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. So I wanted to get this beautiful cover because this cover is gorgeous. It's full of seashells and it's just giving like amazing summer vibes. But I did start the show. <coughs> I hate it. I hate Belly. I think she's an incredibly annoying main character. But for some reason, I can't stop watching it and that's probably the feeling I'm gonna get reading this book. Like, I'm gonna hate the main character a lot. She's gonna be really, really annoying, but I'm gonna probably not be able to put it down. This is definitely one that I wanna read before the summer is over. Um, it's fairly short and it's YA, so like, it goes by pretty quickly. I got this book also at that um, used bookstore, used local Michigan bookstore, and it was just on a table for like summer reads and I was like, you know what, let me just, let me just get it. So after I got it, I started the show and like I said, hate it, but love it. So probably gonna feel the same way about the book. All right, the next one scares me a little bit because of its size and the content. I feel like it's gonna be a very deep read. It's gonna be something that's very <sighs> interpersonal and I don't know. Um, I don't know, I'm scared of it. I <laughs> pick it up and I'm like, ah, I don't want to start this yet, but I know that I absolutely have to read this, and that is The Idiot by Elif Batuman. Um, this is my one of my students' favorite authors, and she's like, you need to read Elif Batuman. So I picked this book up. Um, I think I hauled this in my recent book haul, so you've seen it before, but I've no words i'm just very excited to read this i hope it's not scary not scary as in like terrifying but like a scary read in terms of the size and in terms of the content i'm i'm very like intimidated by this book that's the word i was looking for i'm very intimidated by by this book and i'm not sure why but that's one that i definitely want to read before the summer is over i feel like it's gonna i don't know maybe at the end of the summer it might close it well if that makes sense oh boy the next one i bought on a whim on amazon unfortunately whatever um i saw a post of this on instagram and i was like i have never heard of this before how have i never heard of this before this cover is beautiful and i love these two people's love story that is love letters by virginia wolf and vita sackville west this is just a compilation of love letters that they have sent each other. Love letters. They're, I don't know if they're confirmed lovers or not, but I think they might be. I don't know if it's rumored or if it's confirmed, but this is just letters between Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West, which was her lover or partner, best friend, whatever you want to call them. I did not know this existed again until I saw that Instagram post and I was like, I. I just need to own this. I need to own it. I bought it, haven't read it yet, <clears throat> haven't even started it, haven't even opened it. I'm literally opening it for the first time right now, but it seems like it's just like little letters that they wrote to each other. So this seems like a pretty fast read. Um, I feel like this is a good summer book too. I don't know when I'm gonna pick it up though. Next book I is also by Virginia Woolf and this was gifted to me at the end of the year by my favorite, favorite students. Thank you so, thank you guys so, so much. Like I, oh, I'm so stupid. The Idiot was gifted to me by them too, I think. They gifted to me both of these books. I'm pretty sure it was The Idiot that they gave me, but whatever. They gave me um, To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. And I have only ever read Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf and a couple of her poetry, poetry, 
a couple of her poems. So I'm very excited to read To the Lighthouse. I think they have a movie based on this book. Um, it's also pretty short. The text in here is fairly big in size, so that's less intimidating for me because Virginia Woolf can be a little intimidating. They wrote me a beautiful a beautiful little letter too. I love them so much. They were so so sweet. They really made my first year of teaching so special and I thank them so much for that. But yeah, that is To the Lighthouse. Let me know if you've read uh, To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. If you've read anything by Virginia Woolf. I personally loved Mrs. Dalloway. I thought it was such a clever book. Like just such a I don't know, just such a smart, beautiful book and exploration of characters. I love how she writes people. It's just amazing. I mean, it's Virginia Woolf, what do you expect? All right, the next book I have seen everywhere and um, I did haul this in my previous book haul, so you've seen it before. Um, that is An Apprenticeship, An Apprenticeship, or The Book of Pleasures by Clarice Lispector. I've seen this author everywhere in the book community and um, this is a fairly short book it's one that I think I want to read in the summer as well before the summer's over I'm not too sure what this book is about and I want to keep it that way whenever I read a, an author for the first time I kind of like not knowing what their book is about until I get to it because there's just an element of surprise both in knowing or learning how this author writes their writing style but also like what the story is about so that is an apprenticeship or a book of pleasures by Clarice Lispector all right we're almost done with my summer TBR here this next one is a poetry collection by an author that I absolutely love um i've read what we talk about when we talk about love by this author and maybe a couple of his poems that's raymond carver and this poetry collection is called where water comes together with other water i also hauled this in my previous book haul but i just think like summertime is a perfect time for poetry uh in general oops that's why you'll see a lot of like poetry in this video because i want to get to it eventually um, but this one just seems like, I don't know, it just seems perfect for summer. I don't know what the poems are about, I don't know what the theme around this book is, but I feel like it gives summer vibes a little bit. Last two, last two books that I want to get to before the summer is over. This one is a very intimidating one, I don't know if I'm going to be able to read the whole thing before summer's over. But this is one that I imagine myself reading like little by little every day, like just immersing myself every day a little bit into this book. And that is Devotions by Mary Oliver. This is essentially a huge collection of like Oliver poetry. It's not a, a complete collection of Oliver poetry, but it's a big collection of maybe like her most popular works. Um, and I've just seen people rave about this specific book by Mary Oliver all over Instagram and booktube. And I, as you know, have read the... what is it called? The Dogs book by her? I forgot what it is, but I'll put it here. It's essentially poems about dogs, and I loved that book. It's one of my favorite reads of the year. So I have no doubt that I'm gonna really, really enjoy the rest of her poetry. And yeah, this is one, like I said, that I kind of just want to jump into every day a little bit and just work my way through instead of just sitting and reading a bunch of poems. I want to let them linger and have something to look forward to every morning, maybe with my coffee or something. Like that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from this book. Just like sitting down, drinking some coffee, reading a poem or two and then putting it down and waiting until the next day to pick it up again. I don't know. That's kind of the idea I have in my head for this book. The last one, I'm gonna go to back to Goodreads and I'm gonna read you what Goodreads says about this book because I didn't know what this was entirely about. I thought it was just gonna be a book of nature, but to my surprise, it's not just a book of nature. So that is, um, oh, it's a little dirty. The Invention of Nature 
um, Alexander von Humboldt's New World by Andrea Wolf. I got this at my local bookstore back in Florida and I thought this would be a perfect summer book because, you know, I'm out here in Michigan and I am amongst nature things all the time. I'm outside a lot and I thought this would be a really good book to read in nature. I have a vlog where I read a book about nature in nature while I was camping and I love that experience and I kind of wanted to recreate that experience with this book. But it's a little intimidating. A nonfiction this long can intimidate anybody but let me read you exactly what it's about because I didn't know who this person was and as a scientist I feel very ashamed for not knowing who he is but let me read you the uh, Goodreads summary. Alexander von Humboldt uh, is a great lost scientist. More things are named after him than anyone else. There are towns, rivers, mountain ranges, the ocean current that runs along the South American coast, there's a penguin, a giant squid, even the Mare Humboldtian Humboldtianum on the moon. His colorful adventures read like something out of a boy's own story. Humboldt explored deep into the rainforest, climbed the world's highest volcanoes, and inspired princes and presidents, scientists, and poets alike. Napoleon was jealous of him. Simone Bolivar's revolution was fueled by his ideas. Darwin set sail on the Beagle because of Humboldt, and Jules Verne's Captain Nemo owned all his many books. He simply was, as one contemporary put it, the greatest man since the deluge, taking us on a fantastic voyage in his footsteps, racing across anthrax-infected Russia, or mapping tropical rivers alive with crocodiles. Andrea Wolf shows why his life and ideas remain so important today. Humboldt predicted human-induced climate change as early as 1800, and the invention of nature traces his ideas as they go on to revolutionize and shape science, conservation, nature writing, politics, art, and the theory of evolution. He wanted to know and understand everything, and his way of thinking was so far ahead of his time that it's only coming into its own now. Alexander von Humboldt really did invent the way we see nature. So this guy apparently is just this crazy explorer that explored so many parts of the world and wrote about it and I have never heard of this man but this not only is the cover just absolutely gorgeous but like the title intrigued me enough to actually buy it um, despite not knowing <laughs> about this man like I don't know I'm very excited about this one I'm just incredibly intimidated to read such a long non-fiction book. I might try to find an audiobook of this and maybe it will be a good read to read like sitting in a hammock outside or something like to listen to. You know what I mean? Um, it'll be a good audiobook to have so I'll probably look for that on Libby and go back and forth between the physical copy and the audiobook. But yeah those are all of the books that I have like in my mood reader tbr to be honest i'm not gonna get to all of them by the end of the summer but this is like what i'm picking back and forth from um these are my options to read from these are all of the books that i brought to michigan with me but i've also picked up a lot of them here and i hope to god that I can get to some of them before the summer is over. I know um, I'm definitely going to be able to finish before the coffee gets cold before I get home to Florida and maybe a couple of other books too. I'm, I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling inspired. That's why I wanted to make a video today because I really wanted to get back into reading and making videos and talking about books excites me a lot and it just gets me into the mood for reading again. So hopefully this will motivate me enough to read more. Um, but those are all of the books that I want to read before the summer's over that I hope to get to. If I don't get to them by the summer, by the end of the summer, I might just transfer them over to my fall TBR so you might see these books repeated again in a future video. I don't know. Um, but for now, I'm gonna go read, actually. I'm gonna actually go read. I'm very proud of myself for saying that. But yeah, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read any of these books or any of these authors and what your thoughts were on them. But until next time, keep reading and I'll see you again soon. Bye.